Lessons for protective order respondents from the case of State v. Lewis. On July 11, 2024, the Utah Court of Appeals issued its decision in the state of State v. Lewis. I have provided the link to the entire decision in the description section of this video. The appellant, Kevin Lewis, Kevin, appealed his conviction for rape, a rape he was accused of committing 13 years earlier with his then fiance and now ex-wife Jane, which is a pseudonym, which I find interesting since the Court of Appeals apparently had no problem with identifying Lewis by name, but I digress. Anyway, he was accused of raping her 13 years ago while she slept. How Kevin was charged and why this case went all the way up to the Court of Appeals is a lesson for protective order respondents. To be clear, with my comments, I'm neither defending rape nor claiming to know whether rape was committed in this particular case. What stands out to me about the decision is this. Before filing charges, the prosecutor and law enforcement officers arranged with Jane to call Lewis on the phone and to discuss the allegations with Lewis while the call was secretly recorded. Quote, because the conversation would violate a protective order Jane had obtained against Lewis, the county attorney committed beforehand not to charge Lewis for the protective order violation, close quote. Yes, you heard that correctly. To quote the decision directly, quote, after reporting these allegations to the police, Jane agreed to aid them in their investigation by participating in a recorded phone call with Lewis. Because the protective order allowing only written communications regarding their minor children was still in place, the county attorney, quote, granted permission for a confrontation phone call to occur, close quote, by confirming with the police that no charges would be brought against Lewis for violating the protective order when he spoke with Jane over the phone, close quote. Indeed, quote, the recorded conversation was the impetus for the charges against Lewis, close quote. There are many things one can learn from the State v. Lewis decision, including that prosecutors and law enforcement have an affinity for rules for thee but not for me. This appears especially true in this case, given the existence of this provision of the Utah Code, Section 7736-2.4, entitled Violation of a Protective Order, Mandatory Arrest, Penalties. Quote, 1. A law enforcement officer shall arrest an alleged perpetrator for a violation of any of the provisions of an ex parte protective order or protective order in accordance with Section 78B-7-119. Close quote. Additionally, two more lessons that protective order respondents, both current and future, must take away from the decision are these. One, you can't trust those responsible for enforcing the law to obey the law themselves. And two, do not violate the provisions in the protective order that prohibit you from communicating with the petitioner. It's not only for the protection of the petitioner, but for your protection too. Otherwise stated, not only is violating such a no communication with the petitioner provision a crime in itself, but anything you say can be used against you.